What really is legacy code? Let's get into it. I'm Chris Athanas. I'm a KMP developer. Tech support said they're coming out Tuesday for that. I'm reacting to this uh, video about legacy code, which we all, I've mostly actually worked mostly in legacy code, except when I was doing my startups. And a few of the early startups, I was mostly working in, even though for early startups, I was always working in somebody else's code base that they left or abandoned or was moving on or was dead over it or found another job someplace else. And I have been come in and I have to take over these old code bases, fix the bugs, and somehow improve it enough to ship it, another version of it. And uh, I'm all, and, and then so, so I want to react to this video by Kevin Henney about what, what really is legacy code. This was a, a post I saw a few weeks back. Um, uh, Angel Sandona uh, CEO described legacy code is often defined as code that makes more design decisions than the team working on it. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard this definition. And yes, it's true because you're spending so much time thinking about how someone else. And just the results, the top end. The only you're only you're only able to see the top results. Like ninety percent of these projects, I'm only able to see. I'm only able to see this part. Where is it coming? Here, here, the pyramid of results, right here, right here. I am only seeing this part. I didn't see this. I didn't see this, and I didn't see this. So I'm expected. To, they're asking me. The manager says, "I can't figure it out. I can't. You, it's your job. I'm hiring you to this." They want me to take this part right here and imply what the actions were and infer what the beliefs were and infer where they were gonna get these ideas from because it's not just zing, like people assume it's just like a one line shot for this. It's like, there are literally more ways to do these projects than there are people that do them. Uh, I mean, there's so many ways that things can be done and the decisions are made. And there's, you don't even, uh, these legacy projects, you have debt. You don't know any of that stuff. I thought that's a really good way of looking at it. I think that's a really, you know, it's just like, you know. So, right, we're going to have a design meeting. Who's turning up? Well, there's me. Uh, there's a couple of senior developers. We've got four or five junior developers, and we've got the code base. Hi, code base. Did you get coffee for yourself? You good? Okay. And it turns out, uh, you know, there's the rest of us making decisions, and the code base is sitting there going, nope, <laughs> nope, we're not going to do that. Oh, no, that's, that's, not a, that's not something you can do with me, I'm afraid. I have a veto on this. Oh, you want to be agile? <laughs> have you seen me? No, it's just like, it's not going to. Yeah, really? I was I like, designed agile to start with? Did people even understand what that was? Or was it a cargo cult agile? Was it a real agile? Uh, we, are we, are we were playing with a prototype here that was promoted to MVP that somehow got into production. Is that what we're working with? Do we, do we have permission to throw it away? Do we have the permission to use that as a spec and then build a new thing? Because it's going to take about the same amount of time as fixing up this thing as we can just do another one. And if there's anybody left, sometimes it's best just to let that go as, a, as an example. And then go from start up from scratch from, with all the learnings and all things out. It'll be much more stable, be testable. Uh, but no, you have to keep, we have to keep the precious code base. There's money in that code. going to happen. The code base actually has the casting vote. The code base is making the decisions and everybody else is like a puppet. Okay, and actually, Angel goes on to say, could we define a legacy process as one that makes more decisions on how a team functions than the team itself? That's about the culture and the tools, but also shaped by the very software. Right, so you have to go follow their old patterns too. You're not allowed to start with a newer, maybe it's a newer, better way, easier way. Like KMP, if you just tweak how you make your Android app, you can get iOS and web, desktop, which includes Mac, Linux, that includes uh, uh, Mac Linux. Oh, what's the last one? Uh, Windows. Yeah, of course. Forget. I'd say Windows. So, but anything else that comes along too. That we did. And backend. Not just backend one server. Backend uh, all the servers. Your microservices or just de de decoupled a server. The whole thing could be Kotlin, and it's all running on the JVM. We're running native. I so that's kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. But we are certainly seeing what we're learning is whichever way we look at it, legacy tells you how you're going to spend your time. And that's one of the definitions of architecture Jesus that I tend to uh, favor is that your software architecture tells you where you're going to spend your time. And that may be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah? But it tells you where you're going to spend your time. Yeah. And I, 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 have, I always have a battle when I go in these companies. I say, hey, I think we could probably just redo what you're already doing. Let me stop that right there.
Oh. We can redo what you're doing. Uh, this was a, a, and uh, probably faster than we would just trying to fix your thing up. And they're always like, no, it just fix a few bugs. Just fix a few. It's like not a few bugs, man. Unless this thing was written to be tested and to and to be and to be and to be battle tested. You're just gonna you're, you're just you're just wasting time on the next version. And I know so just got some bugs out of this. That's why on my project I'm gonna start from scratch. You take an idea, implement this for that thing, and if it works, promote it to an MVP. And if that works, then when you promote it to the MVP, you have to rewrite it. You're rewriting it to an MVP. So first, the first is 50 customers, right? Prototypes 50 customers max, and then the the MVP is you know 500 to 5,000 customers max before you start having to put everything in services and load balancing and super duper security and all the different bells and whistles for all the things. And then from that MVP, then you dump that bad boy and you start again and you do a production version. It may look very similar to MVP, it may not, but just that process of going through all that stuff again is gonna give you a battle hard thing. And that gets you from you know, 50,000, 500,000, 5 million, 50 million. Those, you know, that, that gradation, you might, have, you might have to do it again, might have to rewrite it again. That's fine, software, you're supposed to be rewritten. All right, uh, give me a like and subscribe. Uh, I like to rant and at the videos at the on the screen with you, and uh, I'll I'll talk to you soon.